All right, I'm going to be putting it straight. Uh, I absolutely hate staggered embargoes. Unfortunately, I've already done my review of the Redmi TV X 65 inch, which is right behind me. But I can only talk about my first impressions of the same right now. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing immediately after this video is also shooting the review. But you guys cannot see that right now, so you'll have to wait for that. Having said that, I'll try to give you my full first impressions of the same and give you an idea of what I think about the Redmi TV X 65 inch. My name is Ashad. You're watching my smart press. Let's get this video started. But before we move on, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it to get notified whenever my smart press puts out an awesome new tech video. All right, so first things first, this TV is a massive unit. <laughs> what that means is that this is the first time I'm actually reviewing a 65 inch TV. So I was slightly taken aback by the sheer size of this thing. But the good thing is that despite being big and massive, it is pretty light, so you can actually install it yourself. Having said that, I was slightly disappointed by the fact that the legs are very wide apart and therefore they're precariously placed on my TV unit. Now talking about the design, it's all screen on the front. It's not extremely slim bezels around it, but it's made entirely of plastic, including the bezels and the entire construction on the rear is also made of plastic. Now there's a tiny Redmi logo at the bottom. I think it's very tastefully done. And below that is also an LED light indicator for, you know, when the TV switches on. Also along with that LED light indicator, you also get the power button, uh, which is a physical button at the bottom as well. Now on the rear, Redmi has tried to do something cool by adding its own massive branding out there. But honestly, I feel that is a weird inclusion considering the fact that even if you tabletop it or if you wall mount it, you're not going to be able to see that anyway. Now, one of the things that you guys need to note is that from the side profile, it's definitely not a slim TV by any stretch of the imagination. It's actually slightly fat. Nowadays, you do get slimmer TVs as well, but I don't think that matters much. Uh, also, what I like is the fact that similar to Mi TVs, uh, this Redmi TV also comes with an L-shaped groove for all the ports. The other interesting inclusion is the fact that you get this loop through which you can actually put your wires and it ensures that there's no clutter. Now, coming back to the port placement, the ones that are the most important are easily accessible to you. So essentially, you get these three HDMI ports and a couple of USB ports and of course, the 3.5mm headphone jack as well. And on the underside, what you get are of course, your Ethernet port and your cable TV input and your optical out as well. Now, talking about the three HDMI 2.1 ports, Xiaomi goes all out over here. It gives you HDMI 2.1 uh, you know, support on all the three ports. Apart from that, one of these ports also supports EARC, which means that if you have a Dolby Atmos player or a receiver, then you can uh, use it as a pass-through for Dolby Atmos audio as well. Of course, the TV doesn't support it, but uh, you know the HDMI cable can support a pass-through. You also get auto low latency mode, which is ALLM on all the three ports, which means that if you connect a gaming console to it, like for example, the Series X or the PS4 or the PS5, anyone, uh, you will get lower signal latency, which means that when you're gaming, it'll be pretty awesome because, you know, there won't be any lag from when you actually hit the input and the screen responds to it. I did play a few games with it. You can check that out right now on your screen, but my experience with it, I will save that for later. So overall, when you look at the design of the TV, I consider it to be very basic and it gives you a clear vision of the display, which is more than enough in my opinion. Now talking about the display, this is a massive 65 inch 4K LED TV. Now what this means is that you have to figure out if you have that kind of space in your house. Now here's the interesting thing and I asked Xiaomi about it, is that it's a lottery out there. Now whether you get IPS panel or a VA panel with this LED is something that's a bit of a gamble. Now my TV is an IPS panel and I can tell you that for sure primarily because the you know viewing angles are better obviously because even at a slight angle I could see that the color was not uh, shifting but uh, the contrast ratio is not that great which obviously would be better on a VA panel. I'm a fan of VA panels. I would have liked if uh, you know we had gotten a VA panel for review. Now talking about the picture modes, you do get quite a few picture modes, but I was fixated on the movie mode because I felt that the colors were very natural on that. Uh, and you know, I changed the warm color temperature to, uh, you know, your regular color temperature and it was pretty good, uh, a pleasing experience with good facial tones, good colors all throughout. Now this 4K panel also supports all your HDR formats and that is where Xiaomi is going for the kill. We got Dolby Vision on the Mi TV Q LED and that has trickled down now 
to this Redmi TV as well. Now, obviously, this means that you get support for HDR10, HDR10+, HLG, and Dolby Vision as well, which means that, you know, whether you're on YouTube or Amazon Prime or Hotstar or Netflix, you should be able to watch HDR content. Now, while I already have my thoughts ready on what I think about the picture quality of the Mi TV, I'll save that for the full review because otherwise, you know, there's no point of me doing this first impressions at all. Oh, and one more thing, you also need to note that the backlighting is not full array dimming, it's actually local array dimming only and it's more like an edge backlight more than anything else. So that's one thing that you guys need to know as well. All right, now that we've spoken about the display, let's talk about the performance. Uh, you get this uh, quad core processor and along with that you get 2 gb of ram and 16 gb of internal storage i found the performance to be good enough but not as fast and responsive as the mi qled tv i did notice a couple of hiccups when i was actually changing the sound uh, it would be slightly sluggish but otherwise it was all right now as for the speaker setup you obviously do get stereo speakers which are 30 watt speakers but the quality is so so it's not that great i think that you might have to purchase a separate set of speakers for better cinematic experiences. I'll talk in detail about the speaker experience in my full review. Now, there are only a couple of things left, starting with uh, the software that's running on this TV. It's based on Android 10 TV, which is the latest version of Android that is available for uh, you know televisions right now. And it continues to be something that I don't prefer. Having said that, I do like Patchwall. Now, what I like about Patchwall is the fact that it has evolved very well over the years. The cards and the curation and the stacking, everything is done really nicely. But like, you know, Xiaomi does every single time, it's done that this time as well. It has introduced a new feature, which is the integration of the Mi Home app uh, into Patchwall. What that means is that you get this beautiful UI for all your Mi, uh, you know, connected devices that are shown up on your TV itself and you can control them directly as well. You can see that right now uh, in action. It's actually very beautifully done. Now, the final thing left to talk about is, of course, the remote. Uh, it's very similar to the Mi TV remote if you've seen one before. Uh, it's the same. It's minimal yet functional. It's got all the things that you need. I also like the fact that now you can double tap the volume down button to actually mute uh, content. And of course, you can also, uh, you know, long press the patch wall button to bring up a quick settings menu as well. And of course, now you also do get uh, a quick sleep and a quick wake as well. So all of that is pretty great. The remote is pretty good too. So, yeah, so basically, uh, those were my first impressions of the new Redmi TV. Essentially, that is a rundown of what all you get with it. For 57,990 for the 65 inch variant, there are two different other variants, which is basically a 55 inch variant and a 50 inch variant as well. Now for the 65 inch variant, I'm pretty happy with, uh, you know, what you get for the price. Obviously, if you were to buy a Samsung LG TV, those, those would be expensive, but this is not necessarily disruptive pricing for sure, because you do get cheaper TVs, cheaper 65 inch TVs as well. Uh, Having said that, I will save my, you know, final thoughts for the review. So stay tuned for that one. There is definitely a lot to talk about. Ideally, I would have just made one video, but then again, like I mentioned earlier, it was a staggered, it's a staggered embargo. So we can't really do much about that. So yeah, you'll have to wait for the full review. I hope you guys like the first impressions. My name is Ashad. You're watching My Smart Price. Goodbye and Godspeed, my friends. Mm -hmm.